Hey everybody, my name is Brian. So I'm a software developer and I recently got into options trading and this first little bit is just a simple disclaimer. Well, two of them actually. I was recently hospitalized, so I'm still recovering. So I'm going to try and keep this video short and all in one take. So forgive me if it's a little rough and not edited. I just want to get this out there. Um, second, options traders don't know development. So parts of this video will not make sense to you because I am a developer talking about development. Although there are some things we're going to talk about options related. Um, and if you're a developer, you may not know options. So you may be going, what is all this nonsense? Because it just looks like gibberish. It's like the day you first started writing code. Everything just looked like ancient Egyptian algebra. Um, so what are we talking about here? Well, we are predicting SPX. And what do I mean by predicting? I mean within $20 to laser pointer accuracy where this is going to close well in the past, meaning around noon, I want to know where this thing's going to close. And if you're an options trader, you know that that is a massive, massive advantage. Because if you know where that's going to close, or even within a certain degree of accuracy, you can make a lot of money very quickly. Um, I am not some financial wizard. I'm not a huge guru. I'm just a developer that's trying to understand this. So SPX, if you don't know, is constructed or it's a calculated index. It doesn't actually exist. You can't go to the store and say, I'd like one SPX, please. It doesn't work that way. It's actually calculated off the S&P 500. Now, me being a developer goes, well, because it's calculated, it can be reverse engineered. That's actually something I, in a previous career, specialized in is writing software and reverse engineering software using, of course, math. Ah. Uh, Math. Uh, everybody hates math. Anyways, so I've built something I call Magic 8-Ball. It's a silly name. It really reminded me of one of these little toys as a kid where you shake it up and ask a question and then it would say something like, you know, Magic 8-Ball says maybe or all signs point to yes, you know, something like that. It, for the first models were literally that hit and miss, but the newest models are really refined. So let's just, enough jabbing, let's dial in and let's take a look at this. Okay, if you're like me, you're immediately going, I call BS on this. This is complete rubbish and you're trying to sell me something. Honestly, I thought I was just on too much medication when I started down this road. Here's a quick log. This is from Friday. And we're going to go over the chart and the code and all that stuff. But uh, this is from 2022-85, literally last Friday. So pay attention especially to this column G, difference. We take the closing price and the prediction and we get the difference of those two. So at 9.30 in the morning, we're talking market open. I am $24 off via the code. And as it goes, you'll see it gets a little crazy and then it starts calming down. And at one point, I'm only $4 off and then $12 off and then six. And by end of day, I am $13 off. That's right. It just within $10, actually within $20 for, let's scroll up here. Wow, pretty much the whole day. Okay, so the first time we're over $20 off is actually 10.39 Eastern Standard Time. That's kind of nuts. So I thought that maybe this was just some weird math glitch or something. I'm not saying I'm some super oracle wizard that can calculate everything. I'm just saying this is something I've stumbled upon and I'm exploring it. So here's a simple chart. You have calls and puts with the price in the middle. And then this green line is the prediction. So the yellow's the price, green's the prediction, and you can see how they kind of are spread apart. And then as the day goes on, wham, they snap together. And right around 10.30 noonish, somewhere in there, Eastern Standard Time, the prediction model just shows a straight line mostly, and it knows, wham, right where it's gonna go. This is what I'm talking about. Now, if you're an options trader, your mind probably just went, what? Because as a developer, my mind just went, what? All right, so what kind of trades can you do with these? Well, a lot. So let's just flip into some of these trades here. So some of the trades that we can do using options strategies, we can do like a vert, obviously, right? And if that, this is solely for developers that may not understand this. So here's like the price. And if we think it's going this way, we can make money. And we think it's going that way, we can lose money. So it's kind of like an, a light switch on off. You win, you lose. It's pretty simple to understand. But because you know where that's gonna go, you can say, hey, if it's gonna be here, actually, if we think the closing price is gonna be here, we can make this and end up with some money. 
Additionally, if you're not good at just saying, you know, coin toss accuracy, picking a direction, you can do what's called an iron condor, which you think the price is going to land in some range. This is code that I'm talking about is beautiful for this because you can actually see as it ranges around whether or not your condor is going to stay relevant. And it's actually helped me hit the eject button on a few condors when the market got crazy all of a sudden. And of course, it can do a broken butterfly, which is really brilliant. I just recently learned this. I'll talk about the group that taught me this. Um, just love this trade. It's absolutely amazing for this strategy here. Um, all right, so let's let's pull up Thinkorswim. So this is Friday, that log that I showed you. Uh, we have different analyzers, right? And these analyzers just look at the market. They look at like all of the Greeks, like you know, uh, delta, theta, gamma, so on. And they look at volume, they look at price profile, price history, and so on. And they try to make these predictions. So here's the actual chart from Friday. And this is typical stock market, right? This is why options traders typically are like stressing and they don't like being in a trade very long because the more time you're in a trade, the more risk you're assuming. I mean, it just, I mean, look at this. I actually traded this with a vertical. I entered a vert here saying it would be above this spot. And of course the market said, denied and it went down but using the magic eight ball system i was actually able to wait and wait and wait and then it came back up here and then i closed the trade it did dip back down and touch but then of course went up here this kind of goes back to the you know following that prediction line where we think this is going to go all right so different analyzers and actually two of these are right on top of each other let's kind of just separate them so we've got, you know, raw volume. Um, we got a delta analyzer where we're looking at the delta strikes of the options chain. Um, gamma or, you know, uh, GEX basically, gamma exposure. And then we're using the magic eight ball. And you can see some of them are not super accurate. Like volume was way off. Gamma was a bit off, but like node analyzer. 4142 to 4145. I mean, look at this, it's boom. This right here, Magic 8-Ball, is the what you saw in the actual log, this guy. Um, there's a reason I don't have all these other logs. I literally just wrote them, and I'm in the process of upgrading the reporting engine. So if you have this kind of information around, say, noon, all of these option trades just become newbie simple. I mean, I can do them. I can rail out condors all day long and it's kind of blowing my mind because I suck at options trading. So how do we get here? How did we get to this point? Let's take a look at that. So the first few models were actually in spreadsheets and they were not accurate at all because let's just face it, spreadsheets suck. Let me bring up Visual Studio here. So this is Visual Studio Code. If you're an options trader, you're like, what is this thing? If you're a developer, you feel right at home. So this is Visual Studio Code. It's a code IDE or integrated development environment. This is what developers look at all day long. And this is where I love being. So I've got just a simple Python application here. And this is very rough in prototype stage. And here's the volumizer package that I'm working on here. And you can see I've got some actions, analyzers, core, thinkorswim. This is what I'm using um, is the thinkorswim API and utilities. So if we just kind of like crack open one of these. So the core of the system really is we're using Thinkorswim to pull the options chain down and we can actually like pull this file open here. I'm not giving away any secrets. And then we're doing a lot of math. And I mean a lot of math and especially doing like volume profiling and going through and figuring out how this thing works to generate a prediction. Now, if you understand computers, you know that you can make more than one prediction. Meaning you can't just say, hey, this is the one and only prediction. You can actually make hundreds of these things. And that's what I'm working on, actually, is because I wasn't happy with just one because you can see it's off where you can make others. So what I'm really focused on now is upgrading all of this and getting these analyzers, and here they are, um, to actually work together to figure out where that price is going to be because each one is inspecting a different part of the market here. So like the Delta analyzer looks at Delta, the Gamma analyzer here looks at Gex and so on and so on. And then you've got the Magic, Anal Magic 8 Ball analyzer. Um, I'm going to make dozens, if not hundreds of these, but I want to kind of combine them all into one analyzer to rule them all that will tell me 
pinpoint accuracy every single day where that market's going. Now, is this even possible? I don't know. I just know that SPX is a calculated index, and because it's a calculated index, you can reverse those calculations back to their building blocks and figure out what's going on in, under the hood. Again, this may just be a fluke, but as a developer, I don't like dealing with flukes. I don't like dealing with you know, numbers that are slightly off. I like things being laser pointer accurate. And there have been days where it has been literally right on that line. Um, so how do you find out more information? Well, I've, I've been a part of some groups here, and I'm going to go over those real quick. So how do you find more information? That's a great question. Um, I'm, I'm sure I'm going to get a lot of questions. First is probably going to be, can I have the source code? No. I'm, I actually thought about open sourcing this, and a friend of mine talked me off that ledge and said, if you do that, somebody's going to turn around, sell it, copyright it, and you will lose your code. So I'm going to keep it close to myself. I may invite other developers to help develop this in the future. Watch my YouTube channel. Um, this is where I post all my programming nerd stuff here. Um, that being said, if you're a developer and you're wanting to know more, I will most definitely in the future try to post videos about it in my YouTube channel. Um, if you're an options trader, um, there's Ernie's Zero DTE group. He specializes in a very specific style of trading. He specializes in butterflies, specifically end of day butterflies that are super, super narrow. Let's see if I can get this thing to work. There we go. So he likes doing these super, super narrow butterflies and called pinning the trade. And sometimes he's accurate, sometimes he's not. I'm not going to discount Ernie. He's a great guy. I've talked to him a few times. I used to actually join, I used to actually be a member of his group. And his group's great, but they do focus specifically on just this kind of thing right here. He has this whole, I won't give away his secrets, this whole asymmetric risk principle, which is actually pretty brilliant. It just really isn't aligned with what I wanted to learn. I wanted to learn everything because let's face it, there's a lot to options trading and me being who I am needs to know the details of all these little things. But sometimes, you know, I'll go into Ernie's live stream and I'll, you'll actually see me in the comments say magic eight ball says, you know, whatever the price is. And um, it's just fun kind of competing with Ernie because sometimes he's better than I am. Sometimes my program's better than he is. And, you know, mad respect. This guy's a professional trader and I'm just some guy with a keyboard. Um, there's also um, X options. Let me pull up their page here. This is the group I've joined now. You probably know her on YouTube as Ariane. Um, these are super nice people. I actually kind of consider this my second home. I have their Discord channel up 24 seven. But if you're interested, this is where I'm actually at. Axe options, you just search up Axe options and you go to about and then join and it'll bring you to this page. And yes, it's gonna say credit card number because sorry folks, this is not free. This is a paid service of professional traders that help each other out. And that's exactly why I joined this group, because I want to know all of these things and I want to understand them. And the folks in that group are awesome. Um, here's the, actually the group. I'm not going to drill into the group because I don't want to give away their secrets, but it you can see right off the bat, it's very welcoming. Welcome to welcome. I mean, how more welcoming can you get? That's just awesome. Uh, but the, we have a channel in here where we actually talk this stuff and I'm putting magic eight ball predictions. Where is it? I'm putting these predictions in there. I try to do it hourly. So if you're an options trader, that's where I'm putting the prediction is in the ax options group. And uh, there's a specific channel in there that I'm just once an hour dumping these predictions to. And then I do an end of day report. It's actually literally this report. And we talk about this all day long. And there are folks that are like, man, that was close. Or, hey, it could have been better if. And, you know, this is why I'm in there as a developer. A lot of those folks know options, but not development. And they're giving me ideas, information, and feedback that I'm then converting into code. And through trial and error, trying to get this thing to work. Whew. That's a lot of information. And I'm still recovering. So, um... I hope everybody's doing well, and I hope to see you soon. Um, again, I may do some more videos on this. I don't plan on open sourcing this. I don't plan on emailing the source code or showing anyone the source code to prove this. I'm just going to keep working on this. And at some point, I may actually develop a web front end or a mobile app 
Or I may even, you know, start allowing this thing to shoot information to other Discord channels, you know, like just hook into a special, I think it's called a webhook, where Magic 8-Ball could just send the predictions to a certain Discord channel. So that's it. Um, questions, comments below. I'll try to get to them. I'm just, I'm still recovering. Uh, I just thought this was interesting, and I was wondering if there was anybody else out there who's also doing options trading and development. Talk to you later. Bye.